good evening everyone we now have a very strong panel discussing golf facility management the panelists are mr gaurav ghosh from royal calcutta golf club gaurav ghosh has been a top level go amateur golfer very very avid interest in golf course development he is the brain behind development of rcgc golf course we have dhruv pal singh uh, who has been into all facility management for more than 25 years now he has worked with itc classic and more importantly has been with jp greens for a very very long time he is currently the general manager with jp greens wing commander pradeep bagmar who is the promoter of riverside golf course in nasik wing commander bagmar created this facility on his own steam and more importantly he has done tremendous work for expanding the message of golf and spreading the game of golf in hinterland he has exposed more than 3000 people to the game of golf who otherwise would have had never had an opportunity to do so mr ranjit kakkad again from a small city of aurangabad mgm golf course he is a promoter of mgm golf course and he created this golf course in aurangabad where culture of golf did not exist ranjit kakkad specializes in creating providing opportunities to young golfers of all kind who otherwise would not have found a place in established golf facilities mr mr shashank sandhu an entrepreneur a pioneer in chemical industry is currently the captain of renowned bombay presidency golf club bombay presidency golf club is well known for having taken lot of initiatives of creating a better golf course creating better drainage creating great facilities and it's a very very sought after golf club in in the larger city of india mr tony late taylor needs no introduction is founder of quality golf he has worked for a lifetime like more than 50 years in golf industry he has created many golf courses he has created established new golf facilities he has improved existing facilities tony taylor is a very pragmatic golf course uh, entrepreneur i mean he is a very pragmatic entrepreneur in the sense he specializes in renovating improving existing facilities apart from creating new ones i will hand over this panel to mr vijit randjo who will be moderating the discussion vijit hey everybody great to see you all yeah hi vijit i hope every everybody is well safe and healthy uh, so let's get this panel started as soon as possible with it running late with the overall scheme of things so uh, let's start with gorav ghosh if i can uh, yeah uh, hello hi all of you know obviously um, you know we've been uh, you've been uh, at the royal for a very long time i've happened to visit the golf course many many times to play and otherwise also so let's start off by you know just discussing for a golf club like royal where you have you know so much golf for traffic close to 100000 rounds if i'm not mistaken a year so you, you know and i and it's, it's a comedy club so how does the relationship between your golf course superintendent and the committee work there typically uh budget it's a very very interesting uh it's a very interesting question because uh, i've been just as a thing i've been involved with the greens committee in royal for uh, close to 20 years uh, with a break you know a couple of years break in in between uh, but i have realized that you know there is a, a distinct difference uh, of being a good golfer and trying to understand what ag agronomy and 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 thing there is a huge difference when we started off uh, in royal in the earlier days Uh, we had the the greens committee consisted of all the good golfers in the club they had diverse opinion of how a golf course should play how it should 
to behave and have a good order. And uh, unfortunately, we made a mess of it. Okay. Uh, till uh, one point, they, uh, one of our captains, Mr. Arvind Sarkar, realized that you know there is no other way but to get a subject matter expert, expert in this field because agronomy and golf course management is completely different from playing the game. Okay, there's a complete it's a different uh, that's you know the, the the differences are huge. So at that point of time in 2009, we were one of the first clubs to engage in a expert with, and thankfully I've been able we've been able to have Tony here, and Tony can also sort of share some of those experiences. In 2009, we got Tony's company Quality Golf to to come and advise us, and. Uh, Wisely, what we also did was one of the conditions which we had for Tony was to train our people. So, it is to train uh, our golf course uh, people who work under his team. Uh, and luckily, we've been able to uh, address that situation. And I'll come to this question as uh, this, this answer very saying What happens is, uh, Vijay, and most of the people here are all experienced, every golf course is different from the other. Even the golf course neighboring you could have a completely different soil profile and just could behave completely different. It's about trying to find that that what works for you. And what uh, Tony did that over the years was to document what really worked for soil. So today, uh, although Tony now lives in is lives in Florida, but he sort of advises us uh, over over or as a consultant, but. The people who he has left behind are the people who he has trained. And we have now gone back to him that Phil and Ricky uh, both manage our golf course and they do it very well. So this is what I'm trying to do. The basic question which I want to come to is that, you know, understanding what works for you in a, from an agronomical perspective is completely different to what really works as a player. So, you know, these are some things which committees which run golf clubs uh, to understand that one has to really uh, leave it to the subject matter expert and, and understand what really works for them. And that, that sort of is on the uh, That's all I have to say. And subsequently, I'll share it with some of our experiences. Yeah, I'm, I'm so, I'm so uh, happy to hear this. And I'm sure even you know, all the members of the association are happy to hear what you said that leave the specialized work to the expert. And, uh, you know, uh, all that should, uh, all golf courses should follow that model. And I've seen the results, uh, you know, over the past few years with Tony and the team there. Fantastic. Thank you so much for the insight. So moving on from there, I think Tony, uh, we'll move on to you here. Uh, with, like Gaurav Ghosh said, you, you helped out Royal Golf Club, Royal Calgary Golf Club for a number of years. And you probably set up a very, very strong system for you know maintenance and training people there I've, I've seen that firsthand also one of the first golf clubs in the country to have a proper system in place so if you could just provide your insight there what was your thought process what all did you do uh, you know and where royal was when you came in and where do you think you've taken royal to what the journey has been like for you Oh, thank you, and, and um, thank all the panelists for joining this, and thank you, Garv, uh, for your kind comments. Um, fortunately, before I uh, arrived in India, I'd had 15 years' experience working in Southeast Asia and working with committees and sort of uh, various levels of golf in uh, Thailand uh, from, you know, country uh, clubs that were maybe 200 kilometers out of the main city with very few local golfers you know, to clubs right in the city of Bangkok that would do 60, 70 pounds of rounds a year. I, I worked at both ends. I worked at very, very high level and very low budget golf courses. And I grew up here in the U.S. Uh, in the golf business since I'm, you know, 14, 15 years old. I was a caddy and, you know, it was, it was quite charming when I got to India. They just couldn't believe that I had been a caddy. And I said, no, I, you know, I carry two bags, one on each shoulder. <laughs> you know, so... <laughs> Um, but that's, I love golf. I've been in the golf business my whole life. And when I arrived in India, it was just, you know, the most charming culture. And the good thing that you have going for you is the people there are smart. They're educated. You know, you, you're, you have a great education system. People understand they can duplicate, they can apply. Um, and I found that uh, the people are very willing to learn and which is most important. So we, we found a couple of, um, 
one Nikhil who was a, who played golf and you know came from that aspect as Gar mentioned earlier, and then uh, Ricky who was uh, more of a intellectual uh, who was able to you know calculate calibrate he, mathematics very strong and understanding uh, you know technology. So uh, with that combination, um, we placed someone there, Tim and uh, Tim Tim Denham, who actually worked uh, trained, uh, and I, I would come and visit monthly, and do uh, training seminars, and I would train the staff. But most importantly, I want to um, re, re um, go back a little bit and talk about Garov and the Greens Committee. You know, they were also willing to listen. You know, and it was a bit of a trial and error, but I had taken them to the facilities that I had I'd managed in in uh, Thailand and Singapore and Hong Kong Golf Club. Uh, so I took them to all three facilities and what I had done at each of those facilities uh, through the help of my wife who's a professional administrator, as I set up an administration system, I got the goal of the club and the reason they wanted to achieve that goal. And then I, I wrote the policies because you know all of the gentlemen and, and people in the audience, women in the audience, you understand that having a business is, is more of an administrative uh, exercise. It's like having a strong set of policies that you follow. And so we wrote policies on how we were going to mow the greens, how we were going to mow the teeth, how we were going to mow the fairways, how we, what type of fertilizers we were going to use. And this came from my background and experience and, and able to apply it there. So the policies, um, you know, were very, very um, detailed. And we issued a policy manual. And most importantly, it was approved by the committee. And then it was set in stone. And we had some, you know, fluctuations when it came to maybe uh, adjusting a week or two of coring schedules. But, but they followed the policies. And that's what made the system work. And then I also developed a benchmarking system to uh, quantify the quality level of each feature, the greens, tees, fairways, bunkers, and you know, if the bunkers didn't have drain drainage the first few years, every monsoon season, they would rate it 50%, or maybe the greens were at 75 or 80. So I developed this whole system from getting the goal of the club, why they wanted to achieve that goal, writing the policies, and actually quantifying the results with a measurable uh, statistic. And we also did three-year planning, five-year planning, and then we would do a yearly plan. And I had a monthly plan that the superintendent would fill out. And then that's what we would do every day. We would do, you know, per the schedule, um, you know, barring any inclement weather. And that's the key in India is uh, your climate. There's a very harsh climate to grow grass. And so, you, you know, it's uh, you have very uh, wide ranging temperatures from Delhi down to, uh, you know, the south of India and Calcutta. We have beautiful winters, but, you know, uh, frightful monsoon seasons that we're going through right now. But, you know, um, where we will, you know, have five, six four or 500 millimeters of rain a month and low light conditions. I think Kolkata is the uh, second or third lowest sunlight um, exposure on earth in the month of August, you get about 60 hours of sunlight there. So you're trying to grow grass basically in the dark. So having said all that, um, you know, we found willing people, the committee, we had committee support and uh, used the proper technology because there's, you know, a minimum of 15 skill sets in this business that you have to be proficient at from plant pathology, the study of uh, insects, diseases, um, water technology, soil science, um, the game of golf, equipment as the Toro presentation just demonstrated that you could spend your whole life just maintaining equipment and not knowing all there is to know about it. So imagine having to study plant sciences and having to know the periodic table of elements and all these things is high science. You know, today I've been back in America over a year now and I feel like I've lost 10 or 15 years of technology. I mean, it's, I'm having to restudy a lot of things. It's gone uh, way beyond my wildest imagination. So that's in summary what we did. But uh, the main thing was we had support from the committee. And um, as you gentlemen know, they're running the other clubs in India that are on this panel. Um, you know, that's the key. You have to have buy-in. You have to have support. And you have to, uh, you have to prove yourself, obviously. But for me, it took the technology and the knowledge. And they know that they knew that they didn't know all there is to know about it, you know, because I, uh, in my presentations and I would do very detailed presentations, take them to other facilities, show them the equipment fleets, show them the types of grasses, show them all these things. So they had, you know, a real example of what it was like to create a, a high end golf course or to sustain a uh, middle range golf course, because that's what it's all about sustainability. So you have to work with the budget you have too. I'm not talking about, I do everything five star. I still manage a club, 
in uh, Thailand, its budget is probably um, $350,000 a year. And that's all in. Um, I do it by Zoom. And, you know, at the end of this year, because of the COVID situation. But um, that's not much money to maintain. A, but we keep it in great condition and the members are happy. It's 200 kilometers outside of Bangkok. So uh, that's basically a summary of what we did at, at rural Calcutta. And uh, I appreciate all the support of uh, Garov and the past captains and the uh, uh, the staff there because the staff was key in implementing all this without their willingness and while, without their, uh, you know, trial and error and, and you know, uh, wanting to learn, um, it would have never happened. So I'm, I'm very proud that we have great results there now. Thanks, thanks, Tony. And you've done a good job of growing grass in the dark, like you said, you know, very green grass in the dark also. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Thanks for the input. Uh, so we move on to uh, Mr. Shashank, uh, who's the captain of BBGC, also a member of the club, also run by a committee. So, sir, if I may ask, uh, you know, the biggest challenge that I think as a golf architect when I move on to different golf courses, the committee keeps on changing every year, two years, you know. So once that happens, uh, what is the relationship with the, you know, golf course to pretend that, like, I understand uh, Yardvindir Shah who is one of our members here, a young uh, superintendent that is managing the golf course there. So what are the kind of expectations, uh, you know, the committee has from, from the maintenance team? Every new committee comes in, uh, you know, how does that relationship work with the, with the green staff then? So uh, thank you, Vijit, uh, for having me on this uh, panel and uh, good evening to all the panelists and all the audiences. Uh, yes, it is, a, it is a democratic process that every couple of years, the new committee comes in and uh, uh, the new committee comes in with a new uh, set of ideas, a new set of uh, thought processes, new projects. Uh, some are ongoing, some are new projects altogether. And this does present a very challenging situation to the, uh, you know, golf superintendent. What we have done at the BPGC is uh, we have actually structured in, in our constitution a change wherein earlier it used to be a change every year. Now we are saying that the office bearers, the president, captain and treasurer will have a term of two years. And typically the uh, captain takes over as the president. So what happens is you have a span of at least four years where one thought process is continuing and captain being the chairman of the Greens Committee, at least the focus on the golf course continues to be what it was envisaged. The second aspect is, as rightly mentioned by Tony, we have a master plan which was designed when the upgradation took place uh, about uh, five, seven years ago. And David Brinkle gave us the master plan which we are following to the T. But having said that, it all depends on the kind of, you know, specific uh, tasks that uh, you are expecting from the golf course uh, superintendent. Now, if you are able to very, as mentioned earlier by Gaurav, as well as by Tony, uh, we need to understand that we as committee are uh, actually uh, from the outside. And there are professionals who are supposed to actually look after the course management. Uh, if we realize it, we have done is we have appointed the uh, Greens superintendent and who is supposed to look after. He has got a team of three supervisors and then below them are particularly the teams. And they are expected to make the presentation on a monthly basis, on a quarterly basis and on a six monthly basis. Having said that, this presentation doesn't take away from the day-to-day -day operations. Now, we have designed uh, in BPGC, I have designed a concept wherein the entire course is divided into three parts, each having a set of uh, six holes. Uh, what it actually does is uh, each team of uh, uh, one, uh, the six holes are manned by a supervisor who is having about uh, six to, uh, sorry, eight to 12 people, uh, casual workers, uh, because of which uh, the supervisor is the owner of that particular set of nine uh, six holes and then he is supposed to deliver within a span of three days. Why it is so? Because the team keeps on moving from one goal to uh, one uh, set of uh, six holes to the other, which in the event finally becomes the ownership of all these three supervisors reporting to the uh, green superintendent. So then it becomes not a 
competition, but it becomes a healthy competition and a joint and equal responsibility which is owned. Now, this kind of a situation was evolved after discussing with the Green Superintendent. So we need to understand that we are coming from outside and we need to rely and give what is known as leadership and let the professional drive this entire initiative. So this is also done with our CEO, who actually is the person on the spot and the uh, point of contact for any emergency decisions which are being taken. We need to understand that uh, golf course management is a very specialized thing. It requires a lot of uh, scientific management, requires a lot of knowledge. And if we are able to learn from the experts, then probably we need to only provide leadership taking financial and taking decisions which are in the long-term interest of the club. This is the thought process with which we are working as far as BPGC is concerned. Fantastic. I think that's a good model having uh, you know, a supervisor run six holes, team running six holes. That's, I've also seen that usually giving good results, healthy competition like you said. Uh, fantastic. Thank you. Sir. So now moving on to a golf course where there's a unique uh, aspect where you have the operations and the maintenance team, uh, you know, doing maintenance and operations together. Like there's a singular unit. So Gopal Singh is the GM for uh, uh, JP Green, and he's fully charged up right now with his black coffee. I've seen Gopal having a lot of black coffee. Right so, uh, what's the, what's the you know, basic advantage that you think you have? You run a golf course, a resort style golf course, members club. Beautiful layout, lot of lot of membership, heavy traffic, but you have one set of people looking after the golf course maintenance and operation, pretty much. So, what do you think is the basic, you know, reason for that? What are the advantages or disadvantages? Of Hi, Vijay. Thank you so much, and uh, good evening to all the panelists. And special thanks to GCS and uh, MAI for organizing this thing, and uh, you know, it helps bring the golfing community together. It's a great initiative. Thank you. Uh, private clubs, typically, I'll talk from that point of view, you, they're very revenue driven and you, the greenskeepers, have a lot of pressure on them to keep the golf course absolutely spick and span and in prime condition all through the year. The operations team has uh, very high revenue targets generally. And fortunately, private clubs do employ professionals in both the fields. Typically, you would see the maintenance team or the greenskeeper wanting maximum closure days because the more you close the course or less traffic there is easier to maintain whereas the operations there would be a pull towards operating it all through the year uh, you know to try and maximize the revenue so there's always been in a lot of clubs there's always been a pull in different directions you know in terms of the golf maintenance and the golf operations always been working in different directions so having one point of control, one point coordinating both the aspects, uh, it really helps smoothen all the functions. It helps optimize the maintenance. It helps optimize the revenue. And uh, in fact, today, I would say, thanks to that, last four or five years, we have probably been one of the very few clubs around to be operational all seven days of the week. Mondays we operational only in the mornings then we close down because maintenance starts after a certain time and it's planned in a way that the maintenance happens behind all the golfers. So we are able to optimize from all aspects and having one point of control you want to close any day you can close any day also when some fertilization has to take place or whatever the technical advisors give so that has to go. Talking a little beyond that, in this scenario, what's very important to have an outside agency advise you also. So that is a must also because uh, otherwise, you know, you tend to, you know, have one eye looking at a particular project. You may miss out a lot of things. That's why it's always good to have a consultant or a third eye attached with you to guide you or to point out if things are going wrong. I think that's very, very crucial, which people must get involved with. And uh, one thing was what Tony was speaking of a while back that we have very severe weather patterns in India and not only severe weather patterns, the weather patterns have been changing over the number over the past uh, few years. Uh, just to give you all an example, this year, you know, last year in uh, November, we had put ryegrass on the tees and certain areas. It lasted up to May. Can you imagine ryegrass lasting up to May? 
December, there's no frost anymore over here. Last six, seven, eight years, there's been no frost. Earlier, there used to be frost in December. Now, the frost is coming in January. The summers are starting a month later. The monsoons are coming late. The winters are setting in much later. So, keep we have to keep this in mind also while, uh, you know, especially the greenskeepers have to keep this in mind. The operation team also has to keep this in mind while organizing um, events. That it's... It's, it's way different from what it was 15, 20 years ago or even 10 years ago. So weather patterns not only are severe, but they have changed. They've all got delayed. Uh, that And the other thing what uh, Shashank was saying, very good point. Um, he's given six holes to a supervisor. Very good thing. The smaller the task, the easier it becomes. In the sense, like we've also started where the non uh the the non golf maintenance staff the other you know people from human resources people from accounts people from housekeeping people from uh, fnb you know having to pull out half an hour a day they've all been allotted a whole each or two three teams of two three people have been allotted a whole each technically they will not know anything but aesthetically at least cleanliness wise they have been allotted a whole and they can coordinate things with the maintenance better so that helps us in keeping the golf course in a better condition, at least aesthetically. Sure. And also, I think uh, with your position, what I've seen being hands-on also, like you're a hands-on guy, being uh, you know GM, you are out on the golf course on a daily basis. You know, so seeing yeah. that, giving the input back to your team also, I think plays a very very key role in the overall management of the club. Yeah, practice. see the other thing was continuity. A lot of committees and uh, you know, other public, uh, you know, other association run golf courses change every few years because of the democratic process that they have. So that's the advantage private clubs have that they have, uh, the management is there, that's fixed. And you have um, employees, you have professionals in various fields who, who continue for years and years. So JP especially has been, um, lucky and fortunate that we have uh, people who've been with us for the last 20 years and there's a lot of continuity so we are able to make the five-year plans we are able to make the 10-year plans we are able to uh, put up things to the management to gradually take it up and have improvements yeah fantastic and we're also there to see for sure thanks thanks Ruk. thanks for the input so from yeah. one private golf club to another let's move on to uh, mr ranjit Tucker. Uh, who is who is the promoter for MGM Golf Club in Aurangabad? Obviously, a much smaller scale than JP, uh, but a beautiful initiative uh, where there's a nine-hole golf course, uh, you know, in a in a stated city like Aurangabad. Like Akesha mentioned, promoting the game of golf is also very very important for all of us. And uh, both Mr. Kakar and Wing Commander Bagmar are doing a fantastic job there. So, uh, sir, Anjali, uh, sir, if I may ask you. Being a golf course in Aurangabad, uh, a basic facility that you started on your own with very little expertise and limited resources that you built the golf course. What are the main challenges that you face? Uh, obviously, you don't have the expertise or you don't have the liberty to hire specialists for each and every aspect of golf course maintenance and operations. So, how how does uh, things uh, you know work at MGM Golf Club? Uh, thank you so much, uh, Vijayji, for this uh, invitation. Uh, to be the panelist and good evening everybody. Let me uh, give a little idea about where we are and how the course is being managed. We are uh, at Aurangabad. This is a city in uh, Maharashtra, basically famous for Ajanta, Elora and recently for industrial activity. We have some large corporates like Bajaj who have a major manufacturing base in the city. So eventually it has grown as an industrial town as well. Now, you know, we started this golf club eight years back. It is a nine hole course uh, spread over 32 acres of land. And when we started, we had a couple of golfers in Aurangabad. I think I can count on my fingers. We were four or eight people who used to play, mostly from army background and a couple of them from the corporate background. So, you know, the first thing was to actually make people play, understand core golf and, you know, invite coaches give them coaching and you know and this was the initial task we had and that was that went on for a couple of years today i can say that we have trained more than 200 people at aurangabad and there are more than 60 70 golfers who are quite regular 
and um, more than 50 are addicted now so this is the progress which has happened in last 8 years and uh, in last couple of years we have seen another turn we can call our golf course as a korean golf course as well because there are more koreans playing now than the indians there so you know eventually this is given a big support to the city in terms of uh, spreading uh, inviting corporates to come and do the investment in the city make their uh, base manufacturing base in aurangabad so we do a lot of activities for all the uh, foreigners who are uh, uh, who are based in aurangabad so that you know they they can come and enjoy the game because this is the only facility what we have in aurangabad where they can really enjoy the weekends this is part of the city we are a 12 lakh population city uh, at aurangabad so and we have eventually seen a lot of interest particularly after aditi's success at olympics we have suddenly found that the inquiry level have increased there is more uh, word of mouth within the city of for the for this sport um how do we manage the poles there are definitely a lot of challenges we have plenty of sunshine in the city the temperature in summer crosses 40 it's a drought prone area so the major challenge in the city to maintain 32 acre of lawn green is you know water so what we have done when we started the golf course that time we have made 50000 square feet two big ponds which is in this region called as shetala that is based on plastic the water is stored over the surface and it is used during the summer time so we have this two big ponds which are also part of the course because that adds the challenge to the game and you know that becomes the water hazards while playing the sport so it was uh, planned in such a manner where it comes as a part of the game but doesn't disturb too much the whole uh, area of the course layout so this is one area where we have worked before when we are planning the course itself the water was planned very well secondly we knew that the revenue source is going to be low because there are less number of golfers in this city it will take some time so we had planned a cbsc uh, english medium school at the course so this gives lot of support to our economics uh, to manage the course now uh, with this uh, you know these are certain important things so that certain the sustainability of the course is there it's not that you know you when you develop a course and then you wind up in couple of years janki i think there's some some issue with this wifi uh we will wait for him to join back in the meanwhile uh, bagmar sir if i can come to you uh, so uh, bagmar sir is also a promoter of the riverside golf course in nasik fantastic uh, facility that i have been to visit several times and uh, you know it's a small nine hole golf course that uh, bagmar sir has built on his own with a lot of love and passion uh, last time i went there i think there were a team of five or six people maintaining the entire golf course if i'm not mistaken and uh, you had me coming back uh, to you know help uh, set up the golf course for another big events that you were doing so i remember i was setting a, a shaper there to quickly build a few bunkers right before the event you know a, a week before the event there was suddenly four five bunkers around the golf course so a uh, very interesting place and sir could, could you give us the insight on how you know what was the idea when you started this golf course on your own uh, what the journey has been like for you <clears throat> good evening everybody vijit thank you so very much and all, all the panelists are here they are from various very big courses while we are on the very smallest course in a remote place near nasik we are 40 kilometers of nasik in a village and we have developed a golf course in 22 acres and we have very nice surroundings of a river so we have named it riverside golf course the biggest achievement here we, what we have is that the weather is on our side and we have like temperatures ranging from 36 degree 
to lowest right up to zero degree also at times. It is one of the finest weather in the country and Nasik is known for this. And lot of uh, vegetables, lot of grapes and lot of area in this, they produce all the food grains and things like that. So we decided that instead of going for traditional farming, we'll move to a new concept for the golf course. And we designed our, on our own and installed a golf course of nine hole with, with whatever possibilities uh, of challenges one can face, like going over the water body or going over the trees or making bunkers. And today, we are proud that where we had nobody for last two years to play. Now we have more than 100. Apart from that, we have trained more than 2,000 children from all around the local areas and they know what is golf. The children who had not seen, seen even a club in his hand or a ball, he now knows what is a golf course, he knows how it is played and he is now aspiring to become a very good golfer. Especially after the Aditi Ashok, we had a talent hunt program immediately on the next day and we had around 30 children lined up from the age group 6 to around 20. And we chose around 14 children who will be training them for a period of one year, free of cost for them. We have a lot of sponsors also from Nasik and few of the golfers who are there from Nasik also have industries. So they are mainly our sponsors. We have around 4000 odd industries in Nasik. So Lot of industrialists have joined, lot of doctors have joined, joined, lot of architects have joined and everybody is adding whatever he could after looking at the golf course and give us lot of advice and lot of support to us. Apart from this, the most important support it, it has come to us from the district sports officer and the commissioner of sports Maharashtra. They have declared our place as a academy for golf training for Maharashtra, Maharashtra area. And they support us with all the equipments, balls and whatever is required in form of training for the coaching fees and all that thing. So it gives us a great help because whatever the money has to come from somewhere. So instead of money, if it is coming in kind, still it helps us. And this, this reaches the, uh, the lowest uh, like grassroots level children. They know what is now golf. Those who never could wear chappals and sandals now are coming with golf shoes with t-shirts, caps and playing golf. They could never imagine all these things. So that is the beauty of the whole thing. Although we do not have very big facilities for FNB and it is not, it is basically no frill golf course. And but the in, in, important is that golf is being played. The challenges were too many like creating a golf course, creating an infrastructure, training the people, coaching them. Then also green keeping was one of the biggest issues because nobody knew what is around including me. I had to take the help from various people. Vijit helped me quite a lot. Arun Singh helped me quite a lot. So all these things over a period of time for last three and a half years has achieved well. We have now around 100 golfers regularly playing and they are all the members and every day people are joining. So this is one of the th facilities which we have created. And I hope this facility for these young children, they get launched properly into the bigger courses and make something big out of it. Fantastic, sir. And I hope your golf course becomes bigger anyway, you know. Why send yeah. different golf courses? Yeah, we, we are looking at it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <You're> <laughs> and we, have plans for, uh, we have plans for extending up to 18 holes. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. You know, that's a brilliant model, sir. I think must be replicated elsewhere in the country also. And tier two, tier three cities. If we start developing these small nine hole golf course, we'll take golf to a different, entirely different level. Fantastic job! Thank you, Tony. Thank you. If I can come back to you on, um, you know, a couple of questions, uh, like you know, coming from the states, having worked in so many different countries, different golf courses. I, I remember you mentioned so many names when I was there when I met met up with you. What was the main difference that you saw in terms of? how things work, not, not just in terms of the, you know, the equipment and the obvious things that you see on the ground, like lack of infrastructure on the golf course or something like that, but in how things work with the management and, the, and with the committee, how golf clubs were run here versus what you've seen in Bangkok or the States. I, I think, um, you know, just listening to the gentleman uh, prior to me um, speaking now, 
uh, it's just a, it's an, it's an organization, it's teamwork. It's getting the, um, you know, the golf professionals aligned with the maintenance team aligned with the GM, the members, everybody working together because, you know, although golf is a sport, you know, it's also a, a business of sorts, you know, you have to have fundamental business procedures and you have to have teamwork and coordination. Uh, so where that is lacking anywhere, even here in the U S I, I go around to a lot of golf courses now and, you know, the best facilities are teamwork and where they have, you know, it's golf is a game, life is a game. So make, you know, have a fun experience for everyone on the team. Um, you know, the, the um, six hole system that was mentioned was, was great competition. Uh, we, we still have situations like that where they compete to eight, one 18 hole against another 18 hole on the same facility. But um, I think the main thing is, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, we're in a sport. We're lucky to be in this sport. Uh, I do it for a livelihood. So I've achieved, you know, great um, satisfaction out of meeting all the wonderful people I've met all over the world. And even here in Florida, still meeting people day in and day out. But uh, I would guess that the, the main thing I would say, Vichit, is that um, recognize each other's skill set as a professional and, you know, support the associations that are uh, like, you know, the club managers association, the um, AI and the uh, G GCS association there, uh, because that's where we uh, have very strong associations. Every month we have a meeting, we have an education part of the meeting, we have a golf afterwards, and then afterwards we go in for some beverage and some food. And that's where you really learn. That's where I learned as business was from other people uh, in the business. And even going around now, I'm still learning new things after you know, 45, 50 years in this business. There, You'll never know all there is to know. So I think my, my, my leading point is, you know, respect each other's professional skill sets uh, and then work together as a team. All right. Well, Shashanka, one question that I have from you for you, for you is, uh, uh, being in Bombay, obviously the monsoons also are very, very heavy there. You've recently done a renovation of the golf course. Uh, so during monsoons, uh, is the expectation from the maintenance crew different from the other time of the year? Like how does uh, the maintenance crew work during the monsoons? How much pressure there is? Obviously, there's more work in terms of you know clearing of weed and all that. But after the renovations, have things changed? Uh, in terms of uh, the pressure on the maintenance team and how things work at the club. So I think you, you, you'll have to mute your, unmute yourself, please. Oh, yeah. sorry. Uh, Vijit, you rightly mentioned uh, Mumbai and monsoons or Mumbai monsoons are very famous. And uh, they are famous because it rains, it rains, and then everything gets clogged and everything gets standstill. Now, what has happened is because of urbanization, though we are located in Chembur, and we have a, a area of about uh, 100 acres. Uh, the development around the course has actually lifted the levels of the course and the roads by nearly six feet, uh, sorry, six inches to one feet. So typically what happens is the water flows from the uh, uh, municipal uh, drainages, uh, not knowingly into the coast. Now, unless we don't have a very strong uh, drainage system, we would have had a major problem. But having said that, uh, we have actually designed a system, uh, particularly this year, we learned a lot during the last lockdown that when it was opened, uh, this was the first time uh, uh, maybe in uh, a pretty long time that uh, trolleys, uh, the hand trolleys were used because of COVID and because of, you know, uh, touchability, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, a huge use of uh, trolleys resulted into uh, grave damage to the course. Uh, uh, members were using it, bringing it right up to the greens also. So the back of the green or even side of the green, the fairways were damaged. And having learned this lesson, uh, what we decided this time was, along with the green superintendent, uh, I decided a concept wherein we cordoned off the uh, areas uh, where you can actually take your trolleys. Uh, this resulted into we actually put only the uh, nylon ropes and the pegs which ran around the entire thing, uh, entire course. And we also created paths for the trolleys. So without hampering, uh, you know, the paths also. Uh, we What we also did was we used a uh, coir mat, uh, which along with sand. Now, coir was biodegradable. It is similar to a cricket matting. Uh, coming from, uh, I was a professional cricketer, so I used this particular uh, knowledge. Uh, 
uh, we used this uh, uh, coir matting and we laid it up uh, where it would actually give a good firm footing for the trolleys and the wheels to pass through. So without hampering the members' experience of pulling the car, uh, trolleys into the course uh, by creating uh, proper pathways, we were able to substantially reduce the uh, damage uh, wear and tear that could have happened during uh, the monsoons. Uh, I am really happy to announce that uh, in this, uh, you know, these uh, three and a half months, uh, two and a half months that uh, monsoons have actually hit Mumbai. We had only one uh, closure, which was only for about half a day. And uh, in spite of that, we were able to open up. So we didn't co close the course throughout this two and a half months. And uh, thanks to uh, my uh, Greens team, uh, led by the Green Superintendent and also the CEO, we were able to monitor and ensure that the playability on the course was uh, maintained. And also thanks to our membership who actually respected the coding of resulting into certain discipline of uh, taking the trolleys where it requires. It requires a lot of, uh, you know, study uh, research because members were uh, actually complaining that how come all of a sudden you are actually coordinating of the areas. Uh, we had a research and we, we came out with the research which said that the trolleys, uh, the uh, pull trolleys were actually uh, damaging more because of the area which they were covering as compared to even the footfalls, which normally if you're using a caddy. So, uh, Mumbai monsoons are really bad. In fact, it is predicted now we are going to get monsoons in the next seven days, which are going to be still worse. Uh, in spite of that, in spite of the cyclone which hit us, uh, we were able to, again, the same model which I mentioned to you about the uh, six hole. Uh, typically, we had many trees uh, uprooted, uh, heavy trees were fallen, but we were able to clear it within a span of five days which would normally would have to taken more than a month or so. Again, a part of the uh, work that were allocated. And because of the lockdown, what we did is instead of using the casual labor, we employed the caddies. So caddies also got work to do. And uh, they said, I, I mean, we told them that uh, this is your club. You need to take care of it. And unless you don't take care of it, you will not be able to get work. Uh, also motivating them on a day-to-day -day basis helped. And we were able to clear off the uh, debris and the, uh, you know, uprooted trees, everything. And uh, we were able to, even today, we are uh, able to offer a good playing experience in spite of heavy monsoons. I think that's an achievement, I think, uh, considering the Bombay monsoons and what the BPGC used to be initially with, with the monsoons. I remember the golf course being shut down for days together back in the day. In no. fact, uh, Vijit, if you come down, even though the we have about uh, about 10, 12 water bodies, in spite of the levels going up, uh, we have not been a, we are not shutting down the course, uh, and uh, the water levels uh, do manage because uh, we are using the sewage water and the drainage systems being uh, you know good and robust. And this is again the uh, the uh, planning which went into when the course was being upgraded, and also listening to the uh, professionals. It is coming back to what Tony mentioned. We need to uh, ask ourselves uh, as a committee, what business are we in? Uh, if we are in the business of leadership and giving vision as far as the uh, course management and club is concerned, then we should do only that. Let the professionals handle, and they know the uh, job best, and they'll be able to deliver. Fantastic. It will be fascinating to see. So I haven't seen the new golf course. I'll definitely make a visit and see what has been done. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, question for uh, Gaurav Ghosh. Uh, Gaurav, I've always been fascinated with the, the, the league that you guys do. The biggest uh, golf league in the country. Once that is on, I think that continues for weeks and weeks together. I'm not mistaken. So, what what are the special things that you do in terms of setting up the golf course or just management of the course at that point? Are there some, some different sets of you know, maintenance practices that go on or operational practices that go on during that time? Yeah, uh, which is it's a very interesting question because uh, you know that Calcutta, as Tony has mentioned, has very severe monsoons as well, like Bombay. And uh, we've already finished, uh, as of today, our rainfall data shows that we've already completed what we got last year for the full year. The rainfall is already 200 millimeters above that in the middle of August. So, uh, you know, so when we prepare for a league, at the end of the day, this league is, a, is, a, is, is now become a commercial. It started off as a, as an, uh, as a, as a bonhomie 
experience to try and get the club together. This was uh, started in uh, one of our captain Adit Khatan's time, and uh, then it has been then it, it realized to become a commercial uh, thing. Can everybody hear me? Or yeah, yeah absolutely loud and clear. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it became a commercial thing. So now what's happened is that uh, when you when it becomes a commercial experience, then you have to prepare for it. You can't give uh, the uh, membership to play on a golf course which is not ready. So uh, the work starts months before, and uh, I think what uh, even now when uh, Nikhil and we we discussed that we have to now get it because we are reporting our league this year to November, so we have to be ready in November for the golf league to start. And as Mr. Sandhu said, even Royal Calcutta Golf Club. Uh, hasn't shut down as yet. We shut down for a few hours this year at this kind of rain, and we don't have the robust drainage systems like some of the other modern clubs do. We are actually we are pumping water out of the, out of the out of the property. We work our pumps, and these are all again. This is experience based on our experience and how Tony has taught the team, and they are able to do. And we keep playing. So having said that. Uh, uh, we have to ensure that the golf course, and so as, as Tony mentioned, we have a very de defined uh, manual which we follow to the T. Even to this day, if you ask our greenskeepers, they're mowing the greens at the heights that they do. The roughs are cut at the way it is, so to prepare for it, so that you know uh, the weed weed management policy, because you know that the low grow low lying areas get the weed first. So you know to manage those areas, we are we are operating in, in full strength at the moment. And uh, yeah, we will be ready in in November for the for the RPGL uh, to start. And it's a it's a process. And these processes, as uh, a lot of you all have mentioned in the panel, that these processes are cast in stone. In fact, our manual is uh, is written down, and uh, it and uh, most of us are you know this this sort of goes on. Uh, to prepare for our tournaments. We've got an, uh, events all starting in November. So the golf course is going to be ready for it. I mean, that is, it's definitely a practical. Huh? I've seen it once or twice. I couldn't believe my eyes how many people were you know, following like a PGA Tour event. Yeah, yeah it, it actually, uh, it's actually some of the final has more crowds than a PGTI, uh, than the McLeod Russell finals. And in fact, that's the way it is. And, yeah. yeah, I had sweaty palms just looking at the number of people around the putting Yes, yes sir, the one, of the biggest one of the biggest problem is now we are facing is membership tee off time because the RPGL takes time and the, then the senior members who don't play uh, the RPGL are now pushing for tee off times and they say that it's their demo, it's their right and rightfully so. So the so the challenges are to manage. The challenges are also on the golf course team to start. They start very early in the morning to get the golf course prepared for the members to to start. We have members who who come in at. In fact, we just got a call from somebody who says, "Can I bring my car at 3:45 in the morning?" He was so that he can start off. He can tee up and he can block his tee off time. So he can block. So he can block his tee off time at. Uh, you know. These are the kind of challenges that RCGC is facing. In fact, I was just going through our WhatsApp group now. There is there's some rumor which is floating that the membership, that the club will open, only open at 5 o'clock. So, there's a whole load of messages which are flowing around. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, these are huge challenges in a membership-driven club. Yeah. And, uh, and in fact, Tony will bear out. Tony, for years, complained about, you know, the club opening so early because the, the ground staff couldn't go in. You know, because they were getting golf balls hit, hit at them and things like that. And so, these are some of the challenges that we face. Right. Fascinating. Right. Okay. Thank you so much, Jens. Unfortunately, I'm, so we have such a strong panel. We can go on for, I think, another two hours. But unfortunately, we run out of time. Uh, uh, so, we'll have to end it here. Thank you so much, uh, gentlemen, for being uh, part of this panel. And we look forward to uh, having you again um, very soon. Thank you. Thank you for thank having you. us, uh, Vijit. Thank, thank you, Vijit. Thank you all. Thank you, Vijit. Thank, thank you for, for having everybody. Us. Thank, thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.